Welcome to Electron Line. Another way in which we can determine the luminosity of a star is using the Cephan Boltzmann Law. The Cephan Boltzmann Law determines the power output, the energy output of any object based upon the radiation, stars radiate energy, and the equation is equal to the emissivity times the Boltzmann's constants times the surface area of the object times the temperature of the object to the fourth power. Of course, the temperature must, must be in Kelvin. The emissivity of an object depends, of course, on the material, but for stars, the emissivity usually is, about, is number one. So emissivity goes between zero and one, so that means just all of the energy that it puts out, it puts out in the form of radiation. And the constant, the Boltzmann's constant, was experimentally determined to be 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per square meter per Kelvin to the fourth power. So the units come out to be watts. Now, notice the surface area of a sphere is equal to 4 pi r squared, and since e is equal to 1, we can just, just go ahead and leave it out. So L is equal to this. And that means that if we compare that to the luminosity of the sun, we could say that the luminosity of the star divided by the luminosity of the sun is equal to the ratio of the ratio squared times the ratio of the temperature to the fourth power. That's where this and that comes from. So we can actually do that in terms of how luminous is it relative to the sun. We can come up with absolute numbers by putting in the actual radius in meters and the actual temperature in Kelvin. Using the constant here, we can actually find the actual output of the sun or output of any star. For example, the luminosity of the sun is 3.9 times 10 to the 26 watts. And that's how much energy the sun puts out on a, on a second to second basis. But we can go ahead and find the luminosity of any star as long as we know the radius and the temperature of the star. Now again, you know that finding the radius and finding the temperature of the star is not exactly as easy as it looks, but we can get reasonably close. And for example, Regal, the radius is about 70 times the radius of the sun, and the temperature is about 11,000 degrees Kelvin. So relative to the sun, what is the luminosity of Regal? So let's go ahead and work that out. So the ratio of the luminosity divided by the luminosity of the sun is equal to the ratio of the radii so the ratio would be 70 to 1, 70 to 1, quantity squared, and the temperature for Regal is 11,000, and the temperature for the sun is about 5,800. It's actually slightly less, 5,770 or something like that, but that's close enough, and we raise that to the fourth power. So now we need a calculator. So we take 11,000, divide by 5,800, we raise that to the fourth power, and then we multiply that times 70 squared equals, and we get 63,400. So that's about 63,000, so that would be 63,400, which means that the luminosity of Regal is about 63,400 times the luminosity of the sun. And so simply by knowing the radius and the temperature, we can figure that out. Now, it turns out, when it comes to stars, figuring out the temperature is probably the easier one of the two to do. Figuring out the radius is more difficult, because how do you figure out the radius of a star? Well, there are ways we can do that, and we'll show you that in some future videos. Uh, but anyway, if we can get both, then we can figure out the luminosity. Sometimes we can actually use this equation by figuring out what the radius of a star is by knowing the luminosity, and the temperature, because there's other ways in which we can find the luminosity, especially using the mass-luminosity relationship, we can find the luminosity in a different way. The temperature, by using filters and by using uh, the spectral the spectral class, and by using Wien's law, we can usually find the temperature of a star, we can find the luminosity of a star, and then we can double back and find out the radius of the star using this very same equation. So, depending upon how we can measure things and what we can measure about a star, we can slowly zoom in and get all the different specifics about the properties of a star using this kind of equation. That's how we do that.